After over a year of renovating our 110 year old home, we are finally ready to start designing, decorating, and dare I say, move in? We are taking makeovers room by room and starting in a small yet very special space in the house. Can you guys believe that it has taken over a year to get to this day, this stage, what I like to call the pretty stage. <laughs> we are finally past demo, foundation, construction phase. I felt like it took forever. It's been a process, but it has been so much fun, but I'm very excited to be to this stage. I'm officially calling this the pretty stage or makeover season. This is finally when we get to see all of the rooms come to life and hopefully my vision come to life over the next however many months it takes hopefully before Christmas. We're gonna be going room by room, transforming every space in our home. So first up is the guest bathroom. One, the one reason why it's the first room is because we need a bathroom when we move in. And this is the bathroom that um, I think I could tackle first. <laughs> and it's actually a space that I'm really excited about. It did not start out a bathroom. It was actually the kitchen, which was an add-on room to the original house that was built in 1910. So let's take a look back at where we started at over a year ago. And then you come into what is their kitchen right now. And it's, again, all covered in original beadboard. It's got a little more of a slope to the ceiling. I think this is where the pitch of the roof kind of comes down. Um, some very odd things are happening in this kitchen. It's definitely been somewhat updated because it's updated but still newer than 1910 cabinetry in here. They've covered, with the cabinetry in the kitchen, they've covered this huge window here. So you can see underneath that they've covered up like a quarter of the pretty window. Well, that's not gonna fly. That's not gonna happen for us. <laughs> Look at their light. <laughs> like, that is so weird. The kitchen's happening. I definitely want to get all of the cabinets out. All the top cabinets, all the bottom cabinets, all the, all the cabinets, all the cabinets. And then we'll have all of this demo. Let's do it. of moving the load bearing walls here, moving the wall at all, I don't have to break down the wall, <laughs> things like that. Right here between these blue pieces of tape, you'll enter the bathroom. They also finished the guest bathroom. This is going to be kind of decorative. I wanted to tile this and put the mirror above it and there's gonna be two lights on each side. Finished out this area here so i had them leave this part open because i want to do something really cool maybe an old antique hutch for storage this way and you go into 
the very, very pretty guest bathroom for what it's going to be. So this is what the space looks like now. We have drywall, the layout is all done. We have the, our storage built out. Uh, we have an alcove for uh, additional storage for this bathroom. And the windows are in. And it's like a blank designed canvas that's ready for some pretty, I feel like. So over the past year, I have been collecting very unique things for this space. So we're gonna go back to the workshop and pull all of those things out so that I can take a look at them, wrap my head around them, and I'll tell you guys, you know, kind of the inspiration I have for this space. We have our door, one side stained, one side's painted. We can figure out what we're gonna do there. I have our sink. I got it at a flea market in Canton, Texas but I did not pay $19 for it. I remember telling him like there was a little bit of mark on it that I was gonna have to work on. Um, could he give me a better deal? And I think I bought it for 15. And it's exactly like the sink that I was gonna buy brand new that was gonna cost us $100. So this is definitely a savings. Also have our light for this space. Got one uh, hardwire section, but it's a double light. I think it's gonna be really pretty. The globes are really pretty on it. It's so important to have all of these elements so that we can start matching up the metal, the brasses, the, making sure that everything's gonna be super cohesive. Pretty Frenchy faucets, our plumbing for in here. Look at these, you guys. So pretty and so stunning. They have the hot and cold in French. These are Newport brass. That's for the tub. We also have the matching sink faucet gonna be literally amazing I also have the penny tile that's gonna be going on the floor underneath a vintage clawfoot tub that I've been texting with the guy all morning he's been sending me pictures of ones that he has and we're gonna do a five and a half foot they normally come five foot and then five and a half is a little rarer six foot is even rarer to have a vintage one that big and they're costly so we're gonna do five and a half there so underneath is all on the floor here so it'll be all underneath the tub up the side wall here so it'll be behind the faucet for the tub it'll be on this side of the wall and also here so it's really gonna encapsulate and surround the tub and be this like really like bold feature. I wanna pick a very contrasting grout. Have like a, a, a warmth to it, so it gives it a different look. It makes it look more stylistic. I don't want it to match this like taupey color. Also the mirror. <laughs> I got this mirror at an estate sale. I thought it was gonna be perfect. It actually was right before we got the electrical and I just switched the electrical around to only have one light over the mirror instead of two on each side because I just felt like this was like such a cool feature. It's a little bit broken, it's missing some top detail, but I think we can uh, clean it up, sand it down a little bit, maybe put some stain. And this is going over the phonograph vanity. This is the first DIY that we're doing for the house. A DIY thrift flip. I'm so excited. I found this old phonograph. Now the phonograph isn't in it, but it's a phonograph cabinet that I found at the flea market for like $40, $45. And I was specifically looking for a cabinet to turn into a vanity that wasn't very big. Because a guest, ba guest bathroom, we have limited space for a vanity. I wanted it to have a pretty shape. I was finding some of them that were acceptable, but it just wasn't it. But then when I found this, and I thought it was such a cool thing, like an old phonograph cabinet, like we don't really have a purpose for a photograph cabinet anymore. How cool would that be to turn it into something that we could use today, which is a vanity. And the company was founded in either 1904 or 1906. So this has the potential to be over a hundred years old, which is pretty cool. So now we can start to lay out kind of a mood board. What we have here is our penny tile that's gonna be going in here. So I'm gonna lay that, lay that down so we have it. Floors in here are gonna stay wood. We're just gonna sand them and seal them. That's it, a super simple process I think, especially in here because this floor was actually covered up by linoleum. It, it was in really good shape. This is a sample of the wood trim that's in the living room. Each room will either have this color wood trim or a painted version of this. We'll put that piece here so we have it as a color reference. Beautiful faucets. This is just the sink faucet. I have the 
tub filler back there too, but like I can't get over how pretty this stuff is. I'm so excited. This was a year in the making. And I was going through the inspiration pictures for this space. I really took a look at the pictures that like really moved me. And these two particular pictures both had something in common. They had either dark walls or dark ceilings. And I think that that's just an element that I have to do in here. So I want to do dark in part of this space. The ceiling is a must. For dark and also maybe this alcove wall here i feel like it's would be a cool space painted really dark and instead of doing like a black i want to do brown here's another clawfoot tub moment with dark walls and here you can see that the dark walls are paired with a lighter color which this is what i think i want to do I want to do dark on the ceiling, dark in the alcove, but then the rest of the walls that aren't penny tile, I want a complementing beigey warm taupe, if that makes sense. So we need to pick two colors that can go really well in here. I picked up four brown paint colors and two to three, I think I have three neutrals. And I went to the dollar store and just picked up some foam core boards so that we could actually paint the swatches onto the foam core and move them around the space. Specifically, I wanna stick the brown up to the ceiling to really see how it's going to look in this space. This guest bathroom does not get any direct sunlight. It gets a nice soft light all day long. I knew going into picking the colors, all of the colors are going to come out darker than they do if I was to look at them in the sunlight outside. So keeping that in mind, I picked a kind of a wide range of browns to go off of. So I wrote on the back of them so I could know which sample was what. So this is bittersweet chocolate. This is the darkest of the browns. Barista, it's more of a, like a ch chocolate. Like it looks like coffee bean. So it makes sense that it's called barista. Okay, this one is Tudor Brown. And this one is Wenge. And it has more of a purpley, it's a very interesting color. It was the color I was most excited to see. That is Wenge. First one is the darkest by far. It's the most like deep black brown. The second one, Barista, it's the most like creamy coffee bean brown. This one is Tudor Brown. It's, I feel like it's the most true dark brown in its coloring, it's warm. And then this one on the end is Wenge and it has a purpley undertone. This is Glacial Till. This is an actual sample that I already had. This is Natural Linen. This was my gut choice. This one was the one on, on the, in the sample pack that I, I liked the most. And finally, Shaker Beige. This is the darkest and most yellow. I can tell you right now I'm not gonna like Shaker Beige. It's too yellow. Like, it ain't it. So I don't need a spot for it. I'm, I'm, I'm Xing it out already. Glacial Till is very green. It has like a really undertone of green, which is why I already had the sample, because I like those colors. But I think it kind of twangs. But natural linen is very pretty. I feel like it complements all of these colors too, so which makes it a really versatile color. Okay, I'm Xing out Glacial Till. I don't think Barista is it. Barista is almost too true brown. It looks too much like coffee brown or poopoo brown. Poo -poo brown. <laughs> I'm Xing out Barista. I feel like this gives the most contrast. Um, it's the most like cl classic, I feel like, like the contrast between a light and a dark. It reads very purple in person. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, but even with the combination of the yellow and the purple, which is complementing colors. Tudor Brown. That's already very calming. You can tell that it's brown, but it's dark. It's not black dark like this one. Can you guys tell the difference in those two? It's, it cuts, it cut, this one cuts the harshness of this one. This one is like very dark. Comment below what you think. Out of all of the colors, not just the ones I've narrowed them down to. I'm gonna tape them up on the ceiling so that I could see what it looks like because it's automatically gonna be darker up there. Let me know what you think in the comments. We are gonna work on some DIYs while we still wait for this space to be like ready to go so that we can start doing tiling and putting up beadboard and doing the ceiling and painting and doing all of that next episode. So excited to get started on our first thrift flip 
Although I love this humped kind of top, it doesn't make sense for a vanity. Obviously our sink has to go in it and that beautiful sink is gonna be inset. So it's definitely going to sit down and the plumbing is gonna be in here. My first task is to get this topper off or figure out how to get it off. It might be hard. It actually has instructions on how to use the phonograph. That's so cool. Let me start dismantling the top and see if I can get it off. Cut it, yeah. Ooh, left this? No, how do I do that? Oh, like cut it here? Oh, well, that's pretty. <gasps> Could I? Oh, mama, that would be really, really pretty. Like cut it. Yeah, so like cut it here to where when the granite sits down, it has this ridge too. <gasps> We have to do that. Should I try? We're gonna do it. Okay, we're gonna try this. I think mama had a good idea. I'm gonna use a jigsaw. So I have a jigsaw here. It gives me a lot more freedom on, you know, cuts and movements and getting into smaller places. I drill a hole for my jigsaw to slip into so I have better control. through so that's a good thing so we definitely have like a hollow space behind this okay we're not coming off <laughs> was that I was trying to go through. Voila! I need to cut some of it. How pretty is this gonna be? Okay, so this is definitely a veneer. Like, they ha it has a layer over the wood. Everything's in good shape except this one door ha is like lifting up right here. So I have these little baby clamps and some wood glue. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the wood glue on it now while we work on the rest of the cabinet. It can go ahead and set really well. Okay, while that glues, we have to make way for the sink. Here's our sink. You can see the pieces in the center are just like that much too small. Like we just need to cut away a little bit. So we're obviously gonna have our really pretty granite that goes on top that matches the island and the other vanity in the primary bathroom. Um, so that's gonna give it at least three quarters of an inch, if not more. I can't remember how thick it was. If we can get the sink to sit down in here without the granite, it'll fit when we have the granite. I'm, that's my that's my logic. I'm just gonna mark it. And I'm hoping my jigsaw will just cut through this and we won't have any issues, but let's see. of truth but I've actually tried this like 15 times I had to take off a lot more of the inside than I thought I was going to have to because of the way this is shaped and it kind of cones up but I think I did it and it still has a pretty solid support system so mo final moment of truth Ta -da! so now it fits like this so when it's up obviously onto the granite It'll fit perfectly. And this top part smooth. For that, I'm gonna use a stronger sandpaper and my belt sander. Yeah. 
Wait, you guys, this is looking so pretty. I had to go, like, I know I wanted to do a light sand, but once I got started, I noticed that the scratches and the dings, especially where the legs are, like where the, where it's real wood, it was just too, the, the scratches were too bad. Like, I had to take it down. I still have lots of sanding work to do um, in like the more kind of like groove parts, um, but even the veneer sanded really well. I did not increase it from a 220. I think that that's what helped me control how deep I was going on the veneer. Once I kind of took the stain off of one part, I was gonna have to keep going and take the stain off of everything because it was not gonna be able to be matched. This is such a pretty piece. While I keep sanding, I wanna show you my hardware that I got. Look how pretty this set is you guys I found it on Etsy look and they it's the back plate and the knob and I thought I was just looking for unique hardware online and I found it on Etsy but what do you think about this on here oh my god so it would be there would be four of them oh my goodness what do you guys think of these I'm kind of in love with them but you can tell me if they're too frilly I have six of them Actually, I got it. There was a set of six and I was thinking since we're gonna be doing the antique kind of like I'm gonna be replicating an antique cabinet for the bathroom. I could use the other two on the doors I felt like that that would be Cute. I hope I don't need more than just two because I only have six. So this is a water-based stain and sealer And it's the espresso color. It was the closest color to the old um, color which I really liked it was the closest color I could find um, but it is a little more brown which that's okay I mean we're going with <laughs> kind of the brown theme in there so let's see I'm just gonna sample it with a paper towel I hope that the veneer and the real wood stains up the same you know like I'm kind of worried about that What do you think? Wow, I think that's so pretty. And look at this. Now we can tell if we need to paint these or not. So on our hardware, we are trying out some Brasso. My dad thinks that it might um, polish the, we think that the handles, the knobs themselves are actually brass, but these aren't. I don't think that these are. We're gonna polish them up and see how brilliant they can look. I hate to paint them. I don't wanna paint it. If I ask you I'm gonna start with the pre-stain wood conditioner so that the stain looks really nice and even. Um, I noticed when I sampled it that the stain was absorbing into the veneer really quickly. So the wood conditioner is gonna help with that. It's so pretty already just with the conditioner on it. We're doing the stain I tested, the espresso. Let's hope it looks really nice. in the back of the cabinet. 
but that's okay. I kind of have it propped up so we can see it against the wall. And the other DIY that I wanted to work on was the mirror. Found this at an estate sale. I think maybe the very first estate sale that we went to in Texas. We've been to many now, as you guys know. <laughs> um, but this was beautiful. It was sandwiched up in the at like like the upstairs loft behind some things, and I. I'll have to look back and see how much I got it for, but I think it was around 30-ish dollars, a little under. I thought it was such a pretty shape. It just has some scratches here and there. I'm simply gonna use Restore Finish. I've used it on a couple of projects before that just needed a little bit of like touch up. I picked up the closest one I thought, which is Dark Walnut. Make sure we got all the debris off of it. And then just rub the Restore Finish all over it and let it dry and I feel like that's all it really needs obviously clean the glass when you guys thrift furniture or mirrors or wooden you know decorative items it m literally might just need you to wipe it with some restore finish and that's it and it's like brand new because look what a big difference already oh wow it makes it look more brilliant like it's it's not so like dirty or like beat up so easy five minutes looks brand new Looks like, well, it looks antique and new. Look, looks antique and well taken care of. <laughs> oh my gosh, the colors look so good. The woods match. Well, that's good. <laughs> Can you see the space start to come together? You guys. And look how pretty the natural linen is. We have lots more to do. My hardware is actually sitting in Brasso right now up at my parents' house. I'm just gonna let those sit and get them as back to brass as possible. I think that they'll patina naturally over time as brass does, as those did already. Oh my gosh, I just looked at myself in the mirror. I am so dirty. DIYs are not always a clean um, hobby to have, you know what I mean? So I hope you guys enjoyed really episode two of making over our guest bathroom and turning the old kitchen into a guest bathroom that's full of character. So hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so you know exactly when I upload new episodes in the series and new renovation videos every Sunday. If you guys have missed any of the videos leading up to this point and leading up to makeover season, you can watch all of the renovation series. I have a whole playlist on my channel so that you guys can get caught up on. We, I have a lot to do and you have to let me know about the paint color for the walls. I, natural linen is a, is a go. I, I think it's really pretty. For the lighter color, what do you think about the two browns? I don't know which way I'm leaning. I'm leaning towards Tudor brown, but for some reason, I wish the two were together. <laughs> I wish Tudor brown was a little darker and bittersweet chocolate was a little warmer. I'm contemplating mixing them. I, I don't know, we're not gonna go there, but let me know what you guys think. I think Tudor Brown would be really, really pretty. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye guys. I'm the new host of XO McKenna. Okay. This is uh, XO Romeo.